Prahlad continued to contemplate. This self is the emptiness in space. It is the motion in all things moving. It is the light in all things luminous. In all liquids it is taste. It is solidity in earth. It is heat and fire. It is coolness in the moon. It is the very existence of the worlds. Even as all these characteristic qualities exist in the corresponding substances, even so it exists as Lord in the body. We're talking about awareness here. If you're aware of something, are you actually aware of that thing? Or are you aware of the qualities of that thing? It talked about solidity and earth. Here's what we call a book. But what are the qualities that I'm aware of in this book? There's shape, form, colour. There's resistance. Or I could be more specific and talk about a certain textural sensation. These are characteristics. If I'm aware of the sun, then it's not the sun that I'm aware of, it's light, it's heat, and perhaps some kind of shape. So we're not aware of things, we're aware of the characteristics of things. And it's from that characteristic that we posit the notion that there's some corresponding substance or object. So it begins by saying the self is the emptiness in space. Prahlad begins by saying the self is, is the emptiness in space. After this statement he considers the characteristics of things, things moving, things luminous and so on. And then says it's the very existence of the worlds. And then just as all these things have their characteristic qualities, even so, the self exists as Lord in the body. Rather than consider the characteristic of all the things that we're aware of, what's the characteristic of our self? Let's consider the essential characteristic of our self. And that's awareness. That's awareness. The self is all these things because that's what is aware of. And there's no difference between awareness and what awareness is aware of. Just as existence exists everywhere, and just as time exists at all times, this self exists in all bodies with all the physical and psychological faculties. I suggested it before that this notion of all bodies isn't necessarily referring to all everybody else's body, although there's no reason why it shouldn't. It could refer to all the different bodies that we have. We have our physical body. And depending, it depends on what scheme of things you, you subscribe to, really. You might believe you've got an astral or ethereal body. We could certainly say we've got a psychological image of ourselves, that's one body. Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body, and that's certainly one body. And there is a subtle energy body, you might, you might subscribe to that idea. Eckhart Tolle talks about that as well, the inner body, this vibrant sense of vibrant energy that we can tune into. So the self exists in all these bodies as well. This self is the eternal existence. It enlightens even the gods. I, the self, alone am. In me there is no percept or concept. So this is when you can identify with awareness, pure awareness, 
not being aware of anything in particular except awareness itself. So there's no percept or concept. There's no notion and there's no notion of perception either. Even as space is unaffected by the dust, dust particles floating in it, even as a lotus is untainted by water, even so I am not affected by anything. Now, of course this isn't the I in the egoistic sense, this is I as pure awareness. Nothing to do with the personality. Within that I, the personality is one of the dust particles that's being referred to here. Let the body be subjected to happiness or unhappiness. How is the self affected by it? Just as the flame of a lamp, though the wick itself is made of threads, cannot be bound by a piece of thread. The self which exceeds or transcends all material existence is not bound by such materiality. What relationship can exist between us, the self, and the cravings which spring from notions of existence and non-existence and from the senses, who or what binds the space, and by whom is the mind bound? This awareness is essentially free, and the more we tune into that awareness, the more we've got the clearest possible perspective on everything that's happening, and on our own psychological quirks.